Are you gonna fucking do this shit or what? Desperation. That's the word for this episode. We must ask ourselves how these characters got here as we hit the penultimate chapter of the final ever season. At times, logic was applied. Financial incentives are also another factor. However, as the series has moved forward, it's clear that survival has been the ultimate goal. You didn't think they'd really get away with everything, did you? Major spoiler alert, Ozark Season 4 Part 1 ended with a bang and plenty of blood splatter. When pseudo-cartel boss Javi Alessandro, Alfonso Herrera, blew the brains out of newlyweds Darlene Nee Snell, Lisa Emery, and Wyatt Langmore, Charlie Tahan. This was the kick in the teeth that sparked Ruth's grief-stricken rage and set in motion some explosive events that even the birds couldn't talk their way out of this time. Enough foreplay. Let's get into what really happened in the Ozark season 4 finale. About this guy. Part 2 opens with an unstable Ruth, Julia Garner, hunting down Wyatt's killer. It isn't long before her rage rampage ends with her shooting Javi to death in front of the birds and Shaw medical boss Claire Shaw, Katrina Lenk. To protect themselves and Ruth the birds cover up her deed by telling Omar Navarro, Felix Solis, that his nephew has disappeared and is presumed dead. They deserve him less than they deserve you. Which puts Navarro back in prime position to reaffirm his extradition deal with the FBI, but first he must regain control of his drug cartel. Did you hear about Nelson? He does so by getting Marty to personally deliver the message that he killed Javi and sending him to temporarily act as his emissary in Mexico. Joining us again anytime soon? <sighs> nah, probably not. The news doesn't go down well, and someone makes an attempt on Navarro's life, that someone being his sister Camila, Javi's mum, played by Veronica Falcon. Naturally they refuse, it being their main money laundering business for the cartel. However Ruth's a Langmore and Langmores don't quit, apparently. Thanks to the Langmore Snell nuptials Ruth has inherited Darlene's estate as well as her shares in the Bell. She buys the remaining shares off Charles Wilkes and gets her criminal record expunged, making her the proud majority owner of the Bell and the first clean Langmore in five generations. You're either gonna let me in this hospital or I'm gonna leave this building and I'm gonna kill my father. If only there was some kind of gold plaque for that. Oh hell, she can buy one. Wendy Bird, Laura Linney, who has also got a backbone, finds a way to needle Claire back into a five-year drug supply deal with the cartel and a $150 million donation to the Bird Foundation, as well as shares for Camila and Shaw Medical. I don't believe my grandchildren are safe in that house. Mr. Davis. The loss of the bell, however, still presents a pressing problem for the birds as they need it to launder Navarro's money, who has also moved up his extradition plans from months to days. It's a no-go for Ruth, who insists on running a legitimate business. So what do the birds do? Formulate another plan on top of their quicksand foundation of half-built plans. After the hit on Navarro the FBI mentioned that if he were to die they'd be happy for Marty, Jason Bateman, to run the cartel, to keep their drug seizures rolling in. All seems to be going incredibly well. The birds are on the home stretch to getting out of the drugs business, having handed over the laundering reins of the Missouri Bell to Ruth and Rachel, Jordana Spiro, yeah, she's back. Legally, of course, can't dirty up Ruth's squeaky clean record, as the FBI have given her the green light under the guise of a cooperating witness. However this wouldn't be Ozark if there weren't a few more twists and turns. At the foundation fundraising Camila has an inkling that the birds and Claire know more about her son's death than they're letting on. Especially after finding out her brother wasn't responsible, she still proceeds to have him killed and take his business though, which is kind of bad sibling behavior. The birds remain cool and tight-lipped, but a little mention of a gratuitous death and Claire spills the beans that it was Ruth who was responsible. What the fuck are we supposed to do? I don't know. Okay. Camila instructs her henchmen to kill the bird children if Ruth is warned of what is coming. Despite their clear anguish, even Wendy was beside herself, they keep calm and carry on while the formidable Ruth Langmore is gunned down by Camila at the side of the road. Are you gonna fucking do this shit or what? A bitter end to their dysfunctional pseudo-family relationship. 
This note sounds heavily throughout the final act of Ozark, but in true Ozark fashion there's one last stinger for the birds. Remember Mel Saddam, Adam Rothenberg, the disgraced cop turned pie who was gung-ho about proving the birds killed Ben? Wendy and Marty pulled strings to get him his job back as a cop in exchange for his dropping the Ben case. He agreed initially, but his moral compass apparently kept coming up due north. He returns to Missouri and confronts the birds with evidence that Ben is dead, not missing, that damn cookie jar full of ashes. Our accident. Well, but you were all... The birds rely on their fail-safe tactic of bribery, but this time he cannot be bought. Their delicate house of cards is about to come tumbling down when Jonah whips out a gun and shoots Mel dead. Yes, formerly little Jonah Bird, who abhors this life, except when he was keeping Ruth's money laundering books, takes Mel out, sealing his own fate. Just as Wendy finally let go, offering him and Charlotte freedom, his murderous act traps him in the life she wanted to save him from. Marty and Wendy Bird may have achieved the freedom they sought, but this act is a reminder that their ill deeds have impacted and continue to impact that which they